The 2-litre TSI is a very potent and versatile block as we've seen in the likes of the latest gen Octavia, the Octavia VRS 230, the 245, the Audi A4 the Q3, the Q5, so on and so forth. But us enthusiasts think that the 2-litre TSI would fare really well in a small, compact and sporty body. That is exactly what the Audi TT offers. Welcome back to the Drivers Hub. My name is Tanay and today we're shooting a Stage 3 Audi TT. Initially when the TT had come out, people thought that it was a very feminine car and it was really bubbly. But over the years, especially with this Gen 3 TT, you can completely understand that they've changed the looks all together. Up front you've got like a really angular staple uh, Audi bumper now, along with a lot of sharp cuts and creases everywhere and the DRLs and the headlights look really, really angry. As when you come down to the side profile, you'll see that the car looks very normal with the basic cuts and creases over here and there. But you can see that this car is sitting on some really beautiful HRE rims that it gets from the VRS 600. It also comes equipped with Pilot Sport 5 instead of the normal regular Pilot Sport 4. And when you get to the back, it's just a really nice tucked in behind. I mean, it's a very nice, small, compact looking car. It can go anywhere, it can fit anywhere. And if I think about it, this is the kind of car that I would love to have in Pune because Pune is filled with small roads and tight corners and overall it just does a really really good job of you know being maneuverable around the city. The interior of the car looks very modern just like the exterior of the car. You get a 12.3 inch instrument cluster with all settings in built into it as the car does not get an infotainment screen. The interior is premium and quite comfortable but this is not what you want to see. What you want to see is under the engine bay. Coming to the engine bay, the first and the biggest upgrade to the stock 2.0-litre TSI is the IS38 Hybrid Turbo which costs around 1.5 lakh rupees. The controller upgrade is 1 lakh, the Bosch injectors cost around 80,000, the Blaze intercooler sets you back about by 75,000, the Blaze intake with the tip and the downpipe cost 65,000 each. The low pressure fuel pump upgrade is 55,000, the charge pipes cost 35,000, the 4 bar map sensor costs 10,000 and finally the ECO and TCU tune by Menem Performance keeping all of the mods together costs 90,000. With all of the engine mods fitted to the car, it makes a whopping 450 bhp and 600 newton meters of torque. Apart from all of these things, the wheels and the tyres that are found on the TT have costed the owner about 2.2 to 2.3 lakh rupees which takes up the total of the entire build to up to 9.55 lakh rupees which in my opinion is a very good option when considering that the entire build is done in just under 10 lakh rupees. But enough with all of this, let's see how all of these mods actually fare in the real world. So we have finally come out of the garage and I'm super excited to drive it. So before anything else, I think we've got an empty patch on the road and I'm going to floor it. This car is so quick, all thanks to that quattro all-wheel drive. I mean, if you compare it to the VRS, the VRS is a much bigger car and um, this being so much smaller and having the quattro it puts down all of the power, traction is on right now. I am, if I feel ballsy enough, I will shut that off as well. But I know for the fact that all the power is delivered to all the wheels and there is no... And the moment you start going, the car comes alive and even though it's just on a simple custom downpipe, it still makes a lot of noise. And all that this car does is it just keeps on going and going and it just does not want to stop and it's astonishing to see that this is what the TT can do on a very basic simple base map for the stage 3 setup it's running on 95 fuel it's doing 
it's not on anything crazy and we're still waiting on parts so i mean the moment the parts come and the car has been fitted and it gets the final tune i will i would love to drive it then because i know for a fact the car will easily get another 120 bhp extra and to be fair i think getting another 120 bhp in this is i honestly don't know what that's going to be like and like this is the best part about the tt it is so small it is just it's such a compact body like i can maneuver it anywhere and everywhere in traffic like i just took a u turn and i can tell you for a fact that taking a u turn in this is much easier than taking a u turn in my abad i mean with the coilovers the turning radius has gone to shit <laughs> even before that the turning radius on the abad wasn't the greatest but i can tell you for a fact that oh my god this car is so nice and little and small Apart from that, the suspension has not been worked on too much. It uh, basically is running on stock suspension and the stock suspension is super comfortable. Right now, I am on dynamic mode, so probably everything else inside the car and you know the way the engine delivers the power, the suspension probably gets a little stiffer. I mean, even though it's on the dynamic setup, it still, it still feels really comfortable. I mean, I know my benchmark for comfortable has changed ever since I have gotten into my car and I've been driving a car that has coilovers. But this, for a car that is this low and technically being a sports car, it is still very, very comfortable. The seats are really nice. They're big. They've got really good bolstering. They hold you in place. And it's a very, very comfortable place to be in. But the main thing about this car is not the comfort or not the... I mean, it's not really practical, but I mean, irrespective of it being such a small car, and I mean, if you're going to use it daily, I mean, the practicality does take in place, considering the fact that if you're only one or two people in the car. But apart from everything else, the, this car is all and all about the way the power is delivered. I mean, I have been in plenty of fast cars. I mean, I have driven the VRS 600. I have driven an M8. I have driven other all-wheel drive VRSs. I have driven front-wheel drive VRSs. And this just feels like nothing else because especially with those cars, you know for a fact that you've got a lot of power and you know you can put the power down but at the same time, they have a lot of weight lugging around because those cars are bigger, you've probably got two more seats, you've got a big boot and it's just a big long car. I mean with this car, it's so nice and so small and just just the thought of you know like the power to weight ratio as so you're pushing out such incredible amounts of power in a car like this in a car that is so small the only weight that it has is from the gearbox which is the dq250 is the same gearbox that you get in the vrs so it has no problem in handling all of the power this car is so quick so quick i mean even on such a small strip of road, it touches unholy speed so quickly. I can definitely tell you that the TT is a fun little fantastic car that you can chuck around corners, not have to worry and still have a small little fun car. I get the fact, I get the hype behind the VRS, I mean it's a very practical car, it can probably push the same amount of power but the one massive advantage that the TT gets over the VRS is that it gets the quarter from factory. So right there you end up saving around 8 to 10 lakhs. I mean you can use that 8 to 10 lakhs and go stage 3 on the TT. The only downside is that the TT does not come cheap. Getting a car in good condition, especially the Gen 3, is going to cost you somewhere around 30 to 40 lakhs depending on registration, condition, etc, etc. But this car feels like nothing I've ever driven, driven before. It feels so eager to go and it is, since it's so small, it's always just going fast and it keeps on going and going and there is just no end to the power. And I mean, I have completely fallen in love with the car and I know for a fact that if I've ever got the money, to buy a TT and go stage 3, I know what I'm going to do. I know the VRS is a more practical choice, it can seat 4, it's got a massive boot, you can probably shift a whole house in there, but I mean there are some decisions that you take from the heart and not from the brain. Before I sign off, I'd just like to thank Detailing Sutra, Venom Performance and Check Engines for letting us come down, use their bay and let us shoot this car. 
If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for more content like this. This has been Tanay. I'll see you in the next one.